So moving on to the what happened for the tribal people after the arrival of the Britishers. The last 200 years has been very crucial for the Britishers. What happened we'll discuss in detail now. Just concentrate. In the last 200 years, we got the arrival of the Britishers. Why do the Britishers have more interest and concern towards the tribal community? See, so the fact which has driven the Britishers to move into the getting the facts of acquiring the lands of the forest was first one they need wood why do they need wood they need wood for the construction of the railway sleeper coaches for laying down of the ships from here to there and from there to here far off places sending them and getting them then to build the other activities then to build strong ships for them sleeper coaches then the carts to carry the loads from the interior places to the exterior places then the railway compartments and all these things we need the wood to be generated in an extensive manner so the Britishers started to concentrate on cutting down of the forest and also they brought in the new methods that while they were cutting down the wood they were afraid and scared that extensive cutting down of the forest may also cause threat for them not in the environmental point of view but it may become extinct for the supply of wood for them it is not in the favor of any Indians or in the favor of any of the environmental activists but it is in their own personal perspective that if the wood becomes less in supply for them they need to get from the outer parts so in order to maintain the wood balance equal for them they started to implement the second option that is to preserve the forest or to protect the forest Keeping these points in view, in 1876 to 78, they passed many laws called dividing the forest into protected and reserved forest. With a single stroke of the Britishers, this law entitled the people to enforce and leave themselves and become them homeless for the tribal people. Actually the meaning is that here in the protected forest and the reserved forest you are not supposed to touch anything in the protected forest. You are not supposed to cut down anything or anywhere else in the protected forest. Whereas in the reserved forest you are entitled to get a certain amount of wood or the dried leaves which are necessary for us or for the people those who are living in the tribal communities can get some kind of things but there are again huge number of restrictions even in the reserved forests also for them not to allow them to take anything in the higher quality. So in this way the Britishers disowned the tribal community from their homeland. Actually the tribal people used to enter into the forest, collect their food, then collect the medicinal plants, herbs, leaves, beedi leaves and honey all the other items then these people used to sell them in the market or preserve for themselves for the various other activities and they used to lead their livelihood basing depending on the forest lands but with the stroke of the British's laws which were done in the protected forest and the reserved forest most of the people of Andhra or in Telangana or in the northern coastal lands 20 to 30 percent of the northern coastal lands of people depend on forest and in Telangana regions we have 60 to 70 percent of people depending on the forest lands to lead their day to day lives and everything was changed and the British laws the similar laws were implemented by the Nizam people who also brought same kind of restrictions of the people with a single stroke everything was done in such a manner that the tribal people lost their rights completely. Now moving on to the next step what the Britishers have done they have established the forest officers to ensure that these laws are implemented properly. Coming into the actual reality the forest laws the officers are from the higher rich communities or the landlords whose people are forcing the tribal people to work in their fields at very less cost. Even if the lands are allotted for them, they have to take money in the form of the money lenders who are none other than the landlords who used to lend them money at very high rate of interest and to repay back, they may not be able to repay back the loans 
and finally they have to forego their lands and they have to work as a normal workers under the landlord system even if you want to cultivate a land you have to pay a very high amount of tax for the british government that because these are the lands owned by the british government in this way the life of the tribal people has got a various major stroke of twist in their lives and this twist has made them with a single stroke the houseless and baseless people from their own homeland of forest so what happened for them the forest people or the tribal people started to fight for their equality and equal rights against the forest in the east the west northeast and various other places but only in the northeastern part they were able to achieve a certain amount of success for them and many of the national leaders at the moment of the national freedom movement they have discussed that we have to give certain amount of rights for the tribal people and ensure they also follow the same modern methods of cultivation agriculture and educational systems so that they also will be brought into power of excellence same with the other communities of people so what happened in the later part of 1890s or 1980s when did the actual change enter into the lives of the tribal people were these people successful in acquiring the rights or no we will find out then so the change has occurred in the mindset of the people and the government's initiative because now we have our own government we don't have the british government ruling us so the 1988 and 1990 we got the forest laws under national forest policy of 1988 recognized the rights of the tribal people over the forest lands and also made sure that joint forest management it simply can be written as joint forest management has been the initiative of the people it means that the tribal people has to be associated with the forest lands so the action of plan to interlink the tribal people with the forest lands was brought a major initiative with the national forest policy of 1988 and the framework was done with the joint forest management in andhra we called it as community forest management as it is renamed in the andhra pradesh region as community forest management we got the involvement of the tribal community and the major task of this policy is to involve the tribal people completely and thoroughly with recognizing of their acts the act was passed in 2006 by the parliament of india after the great ngos number fighting and discussing about the debates and rights of the people asking and claiming about the rights that the injustice is done to the tribal people finally in october 2006 the forest acts was passed claiming that a grave injustice was done to the tribal people because of the british rule of the past 200 years and they made ensure that three major rights were been passed as a part and parcel of the act of forest act 2006 those three are first one to ensure the food and security for the tribal people second one to ensure the lands inherited by the people to be owned by their own community the third point is if in case we have any natural dams or anything to be built that should be reimbursed properly or relocation to be allotted very carefully so there's no further loss would be accompanied for them in this way the tribal people are being mingled with the forest communities and the government started to work them not considering tribal people separate with the forest lands but forest and tribal are together in the first main point is that the allocation of the lands or the food security for their survival for collection of the wood or bamboo or the leaves whatever it is for their main ensures that it makes them to live successfully and have a pleasant atmosphere that they can survive on the forest which is their basic right moving on to the second concept the lands which are owned by the tribal people should be inherited to the next tribal generation people and not to be squeezed by the landlords or by any mining companies 
or any other companies which are encroaching into the forest lands no forest land has to be allowed to cut further at the same time third point is to ensure that in case if any natural builds are going to be built like dams or railway tracks or something else the proper relocation policy has to be allotted for them and safety should be ensured for them to the nearby forest lands in this way they have passed many forest lands we have again two views on the uh, adjustment of the forests and as well as the non adjustment of the forest in case if you make these people tribal people the whole and soul authoritative initiative to do with the forest they may cut more amount of the forest lands and they may make it completely a dry land this is one point of view which is expressed by the people but it may not be true completely because the forest lands are felt by the tribal people as their motherlands and not as a commercial piece of plot for them and moving on to the other view of the environmentalists that the right people to be looking after and taking care of a land which is of having biodiversity which the people only can sustain there and they can maintain the proper balance of the environment by maintaining the balance of the forest is the view which is expressed by the environmentalist let us hope the tribal people rights are preserved and they maintain the forest in a sustainable level so that the future generation people can also experience what is a forest what are the different kinds of animals live in forest what are the different kind of people living in forest how do they have their survival and all these things in this lesson we have discussed what is a forest how do we define the place of forest how is it different for one kind of people to the other kind of people then moving on to the what are the different categories of forest we have seen the four major categories of forest the evergreen forest the deciduous forest then moving on to thorny forest then we have the swampy or the lateral forest which are also known as the mangrove forest then we have seen the various other angles of the forest when the ap is having 64000 square kilometers of lands of forest which was been disturbed and now we have only 16% of the lands which can be fit to be qualified as to be called as forest we have various kinds of deciduous forest located in our ap region also then moving on to the british laws how did a single stroke broke the entire authorities of the tribal people on the forest lands and made them mere just like slaves under the hands of the zamindars and money lenders then we have seen how did the initiatives of the leaders and the ngos have brought the national forest policy of 1988 and then again further the rights of the tribals have been recognized in the act of forest acts of 2006 so in this way we have to preserve the forest in order to safeguard the environment then only we all human beings can survive happily that's all for us we have in this lesson